Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I am going to be going through now question number two from the June 2021 International A Level Ed Excel Statistics 1 S1 paper. Um, and this question here is about probability. In the Venn diagram below A, B, and C are events. So A, B, and C are events, and P, Q, R, and S are probabilities within some of those events. The events A and C are independent. The events A and C are independent and the probability of A is 0 0.65. State which of the two events A, B and C are mutually exclusive. Now events which are mutually exclusive, it's impossible for them to occur at the same time. There's no, um, what's the word? There is no intersection between them. Okay, they're mutually exclusive. So in a Venn diagram, mutually exclusive events are shown when there's no intersection between them at all. And if we look, for example, at A and B, well, B is completely contained within A. So there is an intersection between A and B. There's some things which are in B, which are also in A. Okay, um, and also uh, A and C are not mutually exclusive because there is an intersection between them. Okay, there is an intersection between A and C. But B and C are mutually exclusive because... B and C, they're completely separate. There's no intersection between the circle B and the circle C. So B and C are the two events which are mutually exclusive. So B and C. Just want you to state it for one mark. That's the answer for number two, part A. Okay, part B. Find the value of R and the value of S. Okay, now we're told that the events A and C are independent. And we know the probability of A is 0 0.65. Okay, so from that information, we can um, derive a few things. So we know that from the fact that they're independent. Now, when two events are independent, the probability of the products or the, the product of their probabilities is equal to the probability of the intersection. So, for example, if A and C are independent, then the probability of A times the probability of C, the product of their probabilities, is equal to the probability of the intersection between them. So the probability of A intersection C. That's true when if they are independent. As they're independent, this is true. Okay? You can say as A and C are independent. So that's true uh, because that's only true if they are independent. If they're not independent, this will not be true. Okay, so now what we have to do next is we have to uh, look at some of the other information. We know that the probability of A is 0 0.65. Okay, so we can see we're told that the probability of A is equal to 0 0.65. We're also told that from the diagram, we can see that the probability of this intersection between A and C is 0 0.13. So we know the probability of A intersection C is 0 0.13. Okay, from this, I think we should be able to calculate what B is. Because the probability of A, which is 0 0.65, times the probability of C, okay, which is... We can see from the from here that the probability of C is equal to R plus 0 0.13. This is the probability of C. So we have everything in terms of R and S, I think. So this is R plus 0 0.13. Okay, that's the probability of A times the probability of C is equal to the probability of A intersection C, which we can see is 0 0.13. So that's equal to 0 0.13. So we have only one unknown, which is R, and we can find that quite easily. Divide both sides by 0 0.65. So R plus 0 0.13 equals 0 0.13 divided by 0 0.65. That's going to be 1 over 5, which is 0 0.2. So R plus 0 0.13 is 0 0.2, which gives us another result. So before we continue, these two together is basically, we can say the probability of C then is going to be um, R plus 0 0.13 equals 0 0.2. So the probability of C altogether is 0 0.2. We can see that means R must be equal to 0 0.2 minus 0 0.13, which is 0 0.07. So that's the value of R. Now we have to find the value of S. Okay, so we found the value of R. That's the first part of it. Now we've got to find the value of S. Now where is S? S is outside of A and C. So A, the, the two circles together here would be A intersection, sorry, A union C. Okay, A union C would be these two parts. So that would be the probability of A union C would be both A and C together. It would be P, Q, 0 0.13 and R. And 
S is equal to the probability of A union C all complement. Okay, everything outside of A and C. Okay, so that would what what S would be. So we can see that um, S is equal to the probability of A union C all complement, and we can see that the probability of A union C. The probability of A union C is equal to now A union C here. You got the probability of A, which we know, plus this R. A is 0 0.65, and this little r here, as we worked out, is 0 0.07. So the probability of A union C is 0 0.65 plus 0 0.07. Okay, 0 0.07 plus 0 0.65. So A union C is 0 0.65 plus 0 0.07, which is going to give you 0 0.72. So that's the probability of A union C. Therefore, we can say S is equal to the probability of, is basically the A is 1 minus that. It's 1 minus the probability of A union C complement because, yeah, it's basically the whole thing is 1. And we worked out what this is, which is 0 0.72. So this must be 1 minus that because the whole thing adds up to 1. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.72. So we can say S is equal to 0 0.28. So we found the value of R and the value of S. Okay, and that's part B done. Okay, now we're going to move on to part C. It says the event A intersection C complement. So let's just write down what we found. This is 0 0.07 and this is 0 0.28. Okay, that's what we found so far. We also know the probability of A is 0 0.65, and we worked out the probability of C is 0 0.2 in total, which you can see from here. Um, those are the things that we've worked out so far. Now, it says the events A intersection C complement and B union C are also independent. Find the exact value of P and of Q. Give your answers as fractions. Okay, so now, what we know here is basically the probability of A intersection C complement, the complement just with the C, multiplied by the probability of B union C, because they're independent, is going to be the same as the probability of A union C complement, this is just the complement with the C, intersection with B union C. Okay, so that this is true if they are independent. Okay, so hopefully this will be enough for us to work out the values of P and Q. So let's try and figure what this is. A intersection C complement. A intersection C complement means it has to be an A, but it must also be outside of C. So it's basically these two together. So this is basically P plus Q. This is P plus Q. These two. All right. Multiplied by the probability of B union C. B union C is Q plus all of this circle C. So that's going to be Q plus all of C is 0 0.2. That's B union C. Okay, whatever's in B and whatever's in C. Okay, and that's equal to the intersection of A union C complement, which is this crescent shape here, which is P and Q together, intersection with B union C. Okay, so what is common between this section here, okay, and B and C? Well, it's only Q. Q is the only thing that's common between B and C. Like if I if I shade B and I shade C, okay, and then I shade A intersection, A union C complement, it will be this area here. What will be common will be this, this little section Q. Okay, so that's the only section that is common between both of them. Okay, so it's just Q. All right, so this part is just Q. All of this is just Q. All right, so now we know what P plus Q is. Why? Because we know that the pro we know that the prob P, uh, P plus Q is equal to all of this minus all of this take away from 0 0.65. All of this is 0 0.65. Take away 0 0.13. It leaves you with this section here. Okay, so A intersection key, P, uh, C complement is basically P plus Q, which is this region here, which is 0 0.65. 0 0.65 minus 0 
and that gives you 0 0.252, 0 0.52. So now that's this together. So you've got 0 0.52 times Q plus 0 0.2 equals Q. All right, so here we can find what Q is. All right, so if we expand this bracket, we have 0 0.52 Q plus, and we've got 0 0.52 times 0 0.2. 0 0.52 times 0 0.2 that gives you 13 over 125 well they want everything as fractions so I'll just leave that as a fraction 13 over 125 and what I'll do is also write this as a fraction because they say they said give the answer to the fraction in the end okay so 0 0.52 is 52 over 100 which is 26 over 50 which is 13 over 25 okay is um, equal to Q so I can subtract 13 over 25Q from both sides. So I have 13 over 125 equals Q, which you can write this as 25Q over 25Q. Get it ready to subtract this 13 over 25, 25 over 25Q, sorry, what am I doing? Minus 13 over 25Q. Um, so we have 13 over 125 equals, that's going to be 12 over 25 Q, if I multiply both sides by 25, if I multiply both sides by 25, and if I divide both sides by 12, I'll find what Q is. So this will cancel with that, giving you with 5, leaving you with 5, that will cancel with that, and that will cancel with that. So you're left with 13 over um, 60. 13 over 60 is equal to Q. So Q is equal to 13 over 60. That's the answer for Q. And we know that P plus Q is equal to 0 0.52. So to find um, P, we know P plus Q is equal to 0 0.52, which we said was 13 over 25. So that means P is equal to 13 over 25 minus 13 over 60. Um, okay, we can do this in our head if you want to. I can make them both into 300 because that goes into 300 and that goes into 300. That would be 300 and that would be 300. 25 times 4 is 100, so 25 times 12 is going to be 300. So 13 times 12, okay, 13 times 10 is 130, um, 156 minus, and you have to multiply by 5. Multiply by 5, 13 times 5 is 65. So 156 minus 65. So that's 6 minus 5 is 1, and 15 minus 6 is 9. So 91 over 300. So we got the value of P is 91 over 300. We could have done all of that in the calculator, actually. I just couldn't be bothered to take it out. So that is the answer for Q and for P. Okay, so there's the finished or final answer for this question. The key for the whole of this question is understanding independent events. When two events are independent, the product of their probabilities is equal to the probability of the intersection between them. And that's what we have to understand to answer this question. Um, and there we have the end of question number two from this S1 paper. Other questions from this paper will be found on this playlist that you can find in this section here. Um, other questions from probability of S1 you can find in this section here you can click on to get that playlist you subscribe to my channel if you wish to from this icon on the top of the page is a card taking you to other S1 papers you might want to watch and in the description you will find links to other papers from Edexcel um, P1, P2, P3, P4, M1 also some IGCSE papers from uh, the Cambridge board if you wish to watch them thank you for watching and see you soon